This is WRMG TV 12 and also Television 97, serving North Alabama and North Mississippi. It's time now for Chuck Clark and Dale White. They're live with us tonight, and of course, we're excited about you being there, watching us on TV 12 or TV 97. Maybe you're watching on the line tonight at Livestream.com. You can get on that phone and call us up, 256-356-2021 in Alabama, 454-9797. Over in North Mississippi. I want to say thank Mr. Joseph McNatt out at Long Lewis Ford for making the show possible tonight. Gina McNatt, your tax collector, and also Holly and Jason Garner out at Little Crumb Snatchers. We'll tell you more about those sponsors in just a little bit, but right now we're eager to get the program underway tonight. We're going to turn it over to Mr. Chuck Clark. Chuck, how you doing this evening? Doing good. How are you? I'm doing great. Good to see you, and uh, looking forward to a great show tonight. Oh, yeah. Good to be here. Though unworthy of his kindness, I'm adopted by his royal family. No, I don't have much to offer him, nothing in my hands I have to bring. But I'm glad I took my place and now I'm feasting at the table of the king. A poor and lowly beggar, lost and dying sinner with no friends. Then Jesus made me holy, saved my wretched soul, he took me in. Now I'm on my way to glory, sharing that sweet old story Jesus saves. I'm so glad he showed mercy, and that's the reason I am here today. For me, though unworthy of his kindness, I'm adopted by his royal family. No, I don't have much to offer him, nothing in my hands I have to bring. But I'm glad I took my place, and now I'm feasting at the table of the king. No, I don't have much to offer him, nothing in my hands I have to bring. But I'm glad I took my place. Aren't you glad you took your place? Now we're feasting at the table of the king. Amen. <coughs> Excuse me. Good to be with y'all tonight. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. I am tired, I am weak, I am worn. Through the storm. Hear my 
my cry, hear my call, hold my hand, lest I fall. Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home. When the darkness appears and favorites right there. All right. I want to say how much we appreciate uh, Holly, uh, Holly and uh, Jason Garner at Little Crumb Snatchers. And uh, they went around when you was a little with it. No. They went around. So can you imagine trying to keep him, Brother Dale, when he's a little fella around there? They probably wouldn't a daycare place around here that could have kept up with Chuck Clark. But uh, but I know I, I was a good I was a good kid. What are you ta- What are you trying to tell everybody? I'm trying to tell them that uh, you probably might have been a feisty little boy when you was running around. There's a good possibility, but it hadn't. Well, you know. Yeah, I'm glad you ch- changed to a good boy today, though. From that little, <laughs> there's nothing like them little boys running around, though, right? That's right. And Holly and Jason Garner, boy, they do a wonderful job. They've got uh, such a great name in the community when it comes to taking care of your children. So let them give you an opportunity to uh, earn their business. If you need a little one taken care of, talk to them and uh, let them let you uh, know all about uh, them, and they'll let you know all about you. And uh, y'all just can come together some way or another and work it out. Maybe say your kiddos can stay at Little Crumb Snatchers. You know, Gina Magnat, we really appreciate her and old Joseph for yeah. making this show possible. Of course, uh, Gina is the tax collector in Tishomingo County now. She's worked in office for like almost 20 years. And uh, she started when she was nine. Yeah. And she, she'll be glad you said that. Yeah. Well, Joseph told me to say that. So uh, <laughs> Joseph might have been trying to get a little uh, brownie points, though, right? But, he might have. But Gina does have. a wonderful job. And uh, we appreciate them uh, sponsoring this good Christian <laughs> programming here at uh, WRMG. So, Gina, thank you so much. Joseph down at Long Lewis Ford, he's been selling cars for many, many, many years. And he does a wonderful job. And he'll oh, tell yeah. you exactly the way the car is uh, there's no questions uh he's not going to hold anything back he's going to tell you everything about that car and then let you make a decision or not joseph mcnatt down at long lewis ford making the show possible tonight and of course don't forget brother dale will be bringing us a message here in a little while but uh, we got a long ways to go and now right back to brother chuck all right By and by, when the morning comes, when the saints of God are gathered home, we will tell the story how we've overcome, and we'll understand it better by and by. Trials dark on every hand, and we cannot understand all the ways that God would lead us to that blessed promised land but he'll guide us with his eye and we'll follow till we die for we'll understand it better by and by
tribulations, hidden snares often take us unawares, and our hearts are made to bleed for a thoughtless word or deed. And we wonder why the test when we try to do our best, but we'll understand it better by and by. Well, now, by and by, when the morning comes, when the saints of God are gathered home, we will tell the story how we overcome, and we'll understand it better by and by. Yes, I am one blessed man. And I've got a wife who holds me tight, and she prays for me at night. Yes, I am I'm one blessed man. John. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. I mean, folks, if you'd like to have Chuck and Brother Dale maybe come uh, take care of an evening service or a morning service sometime, I know, I know they'd be tickled to death. Chuck will even preach for you, and Brother Dale will, too. So, uh, plus you get, uh, that'd be uh, four for one because they both can sing, they both can preach. <laughs> so, uh, that'd be a great service. And uh, But y'all are, are a blessing to me, I'm telling you that. You just don't yeah. know how much we we'll appreciate uh Y'all for being a part of the station here, and we've been doing this for a pretty good while, and uh, 
hope to be celebrating her 60th birthday one of these days. Oh yeah, we may we may have a little gray hair by then, but that'll be fine. But uh, well, a little more. Chuck, I want to uh, say hello to some folks. I know um, I know Miss Joyce Jones really loves to yeah. watch y'all, and I ran into some folks over in I was over there a day or two last week, and they was telling them how much they enjoy the station and all the programs on, and uh, ran into some folks down in Burnsville uh, at the uh, auction down there, and also we down at the Williams uh, uh, restaurant down in Burnsville, and run into some folks there and um i will tell you this if you're down there at that williams uh restaurant boy they got some pretty good fish down there but you might talk them into a little a little food down there and tell them that jack ivy said feed you well me and marlene have been known to sneak in there occasionally hey they've got uh you know the all those tvs they got in there yep. guess what you can pick up channel 97 they can they could uh they can watch you right in there so tell oh. them to turn it on 97 might even see chuck and dale up there that'd be awesome yeah might do it Chuck, uh, thanks once again to Little Crumb Snatchers, Holly and Jason Garner, Gina McNatt, your tax collector, and also Long Lewis Ford with Mr. Joseph McNatt. And uh, I want to say hello to also some folks down in Belmont I know that are watching tonight, uh, one of them being Miss Christine Howard and Margie Farr, and, of course, old Gene Thorne down in Red Bay and uh, Kathy Ivey and Miss Upal Thorne. We really appreciate those folks. They're so faithful oh, yeah. watching us. and. Um, also, uh, Miss May Baggett. I talked to Miss May just a minute ago, and she said, "Who you got on tonight?" I said, "I got Chuck Clark and Dale White." And uh, so uh, we appreciate Miss May Baggett and Miss Eloise Lee also out there tonight. Mr. Walter Epps. These are folks that are with us. So Bobby and Joyce Riley. You know those uh, oh, all yeah. those folks, right? Yeah. Anybody else you want to say hi to tonight before you start back seeing? Well, I, I just want to thank our sponsors and thank everybody that does watch. Amen. And for all the good things that we hear about the program. Appreciate y'all. That, that makes it that makes it all worthwhile. Makes it all worthwhile. All right. Well, I'm gonna try a new one here if I can remember the words. That's the tricky part. I'm gonna try not to rewrite this. One. This road I'm on is straight and narrow, but it leads to a better home. It was laid by Christ one day at Calvary while he suffered all along. This road may lead over many high mountains and valleys dark and low. But I walk each day with sweet assurance that I'll safely reach my home. Ahead. There's joy and gladness and rest for the Everybody will be happy and whole, and I know I'll be at home with Jesus where tears will never be shed. Though so often this road gets rough and rocky, still I know what lies ahead. While on this road I get so weary and often my feet would stray But a gentle hand still leads me onward and helps me find a way As I climb each hill and cross each valley by his hand I'm daily led No, I won't look back, gonna keep on walking cause I know what lies ahead For the weary soul ahead. Oh, there's peace and contentment. Everybody will be happy and whole. And I know I'll be at home with Jesus where tears will never be shed. Though so often this road gets rough and rocky, still I know what lies ahead. Though so You like that one, huh? Yeah. All righty. We're going to try to do one more here and get Brother Dale up here. How's that sound, Jack?
again live with us here tonight and at this time we're going to uh introduce our next speaker chuck you want to have the pleasure of doing that all right well folks here he is <laughs> a good friend a good feller and i'm proud to say my brother in christ amen. brother amen. dale white amen amen how y'all doing tonight i can tell you for a certainty that chuck and i are tickled to death to be here even though even though when we got to the door and knocked on it, Jack come to the door and said, what are y'all doing here? Y'all ain't supposed to be here tonight. <laughs> but we went ahead and set up, and here we are. And we thank you for it. We also trust that you had a good 4th of July, spent some time with the family and the kids, grandkids if you have them, great-grandkids, spent time at church, but most of all, that you took the time out of your schedule to think about those who gave their all in wartime, in the military, and various other things that they fought for to give us the freedoms that we have today. We did not get freedom for nothing. Freedom cost, it cost our military, and it cost Jesus spiritually, his life, that we might have spiritual freedom. And thank God I've got it. Thank God I've got spiritual freedom. If you would like to follow along with me tonight, I'm going to go to Exodus chapter 3, <clears throat> talk about Moses, and something very much out of the ordinary. And I'll ask you this question now. Are you an ordinary, below average, or out of the ordinary Christian? And for those of you that aren't saved, you can 
become an extraordinary Christian tonight before this program is over. Uh, go ahead and find your Bibles if you'd like to, if you can. Uh, don't be going down the road trying to drive and reach for a Bible and trying to read. I don't want that, but we'll be reading from Exodus chapter 3. <clears throat> I'd like to lead us in a word of prayer before we go there, though, tonight. If you would, let's bow in prayer. Dear God, I thank you again for this opportunity. I thank you for this day, this season. Thank you so much for being with us and lead, guide, and direct us. And asked, I asked you to forgive us of our sins. And if it would be possible, I'd say forgive me for the sins of the United States. Forgive me for the people that are being killed being by snipers on uh, buildings and the runaway trucks and bombings and whatever the case may be that's taken so many lives out daily. Lord, heal our land, heal, heal our feelings, heal our hearts. Let us turn back to you. And I'll say this, Lord, let us find a way to put prayer and the Ten Commandments back in school. I, I, I'm not for offending anybody except Satan. And I want him run plumb out of the country, plumb out of this world. We know from reading the back of this holy book that Jesus has already won. We've won the ones that stand with him. Satan is the defeated foe, if we could just get people to understand that. Be with us and lead God and direct us in Jesus' name. Amen. Being extraordinary or out of the ordinary is what we're going to be talking about. But I found this little uh, story at a, at, at a church, at Forked Oak Church down in Prentice County, where I was privileged to uh, bring the message this morning. And I thank those people for inviting me. And it goes something like this, and it goes right along, right along with what I'm going to talk to you about. There was a duck with his mates that started flying southward for the winter. During the flight, he came down close to a barnyard and saw some of his kinfolks on the ground. Well, he flew down for a while and he ended up staying an hour, a day, for a week, and then finally he realized to get to where he was going in time and do it safely, he had to take flight. So one autumn day he took flight when he heard the wings and he heard the honking of some ducks flying, wild ducks flying over the barnyard. As he tried, he found that it was strange because his leisure living and the abundance of food, he was overweight and was very weak. So he thought, I'll just spend the winter here. So he found that the fare was still good. Even though he was soft and heavy, he stayed and stayed. So he dropped back down to the barnyard and stayed a long time. And he made this statement, oh well, my life is safe here, and the food is good. Every spring and autumn, when he heard the wild ducks honking, his eyes would gleam toward the moment of toward the mountains and think about the moment that he soared on his wings with his compadres. But finally the day came when the wild ducks flew over and he heard their cry but he paid them no attention. Think about that. In some of our churches and some of our workplaces, we have got so used to what we used to call wrong that we really don't let it bother us anymore. Like the little wild duck who chose to become domesticated and while he was becoming domesticated, he allowed himself the free food, the free lodging, the free water, the fellowship. He turned his back on his what he knew to be true and stayed in the barnyard. 
Are we Christian? Are we ordinary, extraordinary, out of the ordinary, or not so ordinary at all? Reading from chapter 3. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush, and he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. When I was studying preparing for this, is the first time that I had ever paid attention to and did much thinking on the fact that an angel of the Lord appeared in the bush that was on fire. Think about that. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burned. Now he's, he's in the desert. He's keeping flock. He'd been there for quite a while. If you know anything about your, your biblical history. He was in the palace, I believe, for 40 years, and he was in the desert, I believe, for 40 years. And during this 40 years, he had uh, married, daughter of Jethro. He put him to work as being a tender of the sheep, being a shepherd. Been all over the desert. And I, one thing that stood out in my reading of this is that he was on the back side of the desert. Now, it kind of reminds me of the story that people used to ask, how far can a dog run into the woods? Well, he can only run halfway. If he gets past halfway, he's running out of the woods on the other side. Same thing about this. Where did they consider the backside of the desert? Just a thought. And when the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Draw not nigh hither. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, and Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. What is ordinary in your life? What have you grown accustomed to? Now in the desert where Moses was keeping these sheep, it was ordinary for him to see bushes burst into flame, but they were consumed. It was hot in the desert. It would get hotter in some places as it would others. I know that one of the things that I do is, is uh, me and my son-in-law cut a cemetery lot, I mean a graveyard and a, and a church lot. And there's one, one spot in this cemetery that is absolutely amazing. You walk across it, and there's steam coming up out of the ground. I don't care how dry it is, the rest of the place. In that one area, there's steam that's coming up out of the ground. You learn the area. You learn the significance of an area. You, you, you learn what to do and what not in certain areas. What is ordinary to you? What's ordinary at your church? What's ordinary at your home? What's ordinary at your work? What's ordinary in your ple pleasure time? What's ordinary with your children or grandchildren? Is the ordinary godly? Or is it like this duck who's found an area that he was not accustomed to? He just thought he was going to check it out. And in checking it out, he stayed and stayed and stayed, and he allowed the, uh, and became accustomed to the feeding and the watering and the fellowship of the people that was there. 
There's people that I know of that would not consider listening to a foul, much dusty, musty joke at church, but they'll tell them on the job. I don't understand that. I really don't. And when Moses saw the bush burned and he saw that it was not consumed, it got his attention. How are we getting attention of the people that are around us, our family members, our church, fellow church people? How are we getting their attention? What are we doing that is attention getting? This bush was not consumed. It wasn't being just poof, burned up. It burned, it flamed, it glowed. There was an angel of the Lord inside the bush. The Bible doesn't say whether that angel spoke or not, but the presence of that got Moses' attention. And he said, I will turn aside. What's going to happen in our lives and what's going to happen in our nation that's going to cause us to, wait a minute, stop. Put up the roadblocks. Let's not go this way anymore. Let's turn aside. Let's turn back to God. Let's get on our knees. I've been trying to get Chuck to get a song. And, and one of the lines is, there's prayer on your knees, so hit the floor. I like that. I can remember one of my grandmothers, my grandmother White, wore the old-timey aprons pinned at the top, tied in here. She used that apron not only for wiping her hands and drying the dishes, but go to the garden, and she would fill up the lower halves and pick the two corners and take the produce in the house. Some of you have got grandmothers that's done the same thing, may even have one of grandma's old aprons. What are we doing that's catching the attention of the people around us? Moses made a decision. He's thinking, I've seen bushes burn up in the desert before, but this one's burning, but it's not burning up. It's not being consumed. I'm going to go check this out. I'm going to go see for myself. I'm not going to ask anybody. I'm not going to take anybody else's word for it. I'm not going to listen to the rumor. I don't want to start a rumor. I want to know what's happening to this bush. And when he gets there, God says, when the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, what happened? It says that he called on his name, called his name, Moses, Moses, called his, got his attention, got his attention because he wanted to tell him something. First thing he wanted to say to him, said, don't come any closer. Don't draw nigh. And take the shoes off of your feet because this place is holy ground. Why did he say, take your shoes off? Because this place is holy ground. God didn't want anything between the holy ground and the person of Moses. Take the shoe leather off off your feet. It's going to be in the way from your standing on the holy. It's going to be in the way of standing in my presence. I don't want nothing to come between me and you. I've got something to say to you. I want to bless you. What do we carry? A lot of people call it extra baggage. What do we carry around with us that keeps us from the very presence of God himself. How do we take those bags off? Throw them away, lay them down, or whatever. I don't care. Just get rid of them. God doesn't care. Just get rid of them. But if it's a, in a situation where you go to the altar and say, Lord, you got to help me. you got to take this off of me. And you, I lay it down at your feet. I lay it down at the altar. And as you get up, you turn around and you put one hand behind you and you pick it up and you carry it with you again. 
That's not what he's talking about. He's saying, take the shoes off of your feet. I don't want nothing between me and you. I want all of you. I want all of your concentration. I want you to understand what I'm going to do and what I've got to say. I don't want anything between me and you. You're standing on holy ground. Why is it holy? Because God is present. That's the only thing that makes it holy. He didn't say it was in a church sanctuary. He didn't say it was in a, a, a temple or a synagogue. He said it was in a desert. But it's holy ground when God is present. It's holy ground. And then God said, I am God, thy father, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He said, I am the great I am. Why, did, why does he call it I am? I am whatever you need in the time of need. I am your shield, your buckler, as it says in Psalms. I am your high tower, your resting place. I am your healing, your forgiving. I am your provider. I am your comforter. I am your brother. I am your father, your mother, your spouse, whatever you need. If you've been done wrong by an earthly person, God is the person that you need because he will never do you wrong. He will never do you wrong. He will always steer you right. And he says that Lo, I am with thee always, even unto the end of the age. He don't say that you take me and I won't let you go through anything. No. It's, the Bible's full of we're going across, we're going to the other side, we're going to go through. It says, I'm going to have to paraphrase here, man that's born of woman was going to have tribulations and trials. But I'll be with you through them all. And the, 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 you, I know that you've seen it in different places. The poem about the footprints in the sand. The guy gets complaining when he just sees one set of footprints. And he talks to God about it and God says, Ah, but I was carrying you. Those are my footprints. That's what kind of God I serve. Do you? Do you know him? Do you serve him? That's the kind of God that I serve. Remember one thing. He's, he's getting in a position to cry out, to, or not cry out, but to call Moses into the ministry at that particular time. But remember one thing. God don't call the occult. Equipped. God equips the call. If you feel like God is doing you, doing something for you, calling you into a part of ministry, but as Moses said, I, I'm not eloquent of speech. I can't do that. God don't call the equipped. God equips the call. And Right before Chuck comes back in and, and, and finishes up the program, I'd like to pray with you one more time and ask you the question, are you ordinary, out of the ordinary, or extraordinary? Are you saved? Have you ever been saved? Do you know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? That's the key question. That's the key question. Are you saved? Dear God, in the name of Jesus, right now I ask if there's anyone, anywhere, under the sound of my voice that needs you in the free pardon of sin, that needs you to take their life and turn them around, to get them out of the ordinary, to get them out of a sin state of being and turn their life over to you, that they might have life and have it more abundantly. Now's the time. I ask you, dear God, through the Holy Spirit, to stir in their life 
and give them the holy boldness to turn to Jesus. In his name, in Jesus' name, I pray these things. Amen. Thank you, Brother Dale. We're going to go back over to the world-famous uh, Chuck Clark. and uh, Chuck, a uh, pretty good act to follow that there in oh, Brother yeah. Dale, isn't he? Oh, yeah. Brother Dale does a wonderful job, and we appreciate him very, very much. He about caught me out there talking to you, and I didn't get back in here almost in time. I won't tell him that you was bragging on him, though. Oh, yeah. don't. Yeah, let's not do that. Appreciate Holly and Jason Garner. Little oh, Crumb yeah. Snatchers making the show possible tonight. Gina McNatch, your tax collector for Tishomingo County, and also Long Lewis Ford down in Corinth. And, of course, the main guy to see down there to get that automobile is Mr. Joseph Magnat. Now, back here he is, Mr. Chuck Clark. All right, we're going to send this one out to Miss Joyce Jones. <laughs> I can list all the Bible studies in town I watch Christian TV And I know all the preachers and their cliches I've been born again Without a doubt I know I'm saved But sometimes I hurt And sometimes I cry Sometimes I can't get it right No matter how hard I seem to try Sometimes I fall down And stumble over my own disguise Well, I try to look strong As the whole world looks on But sometimes alone I cry I try to speak faith Never give that old devil one inch to get in I do worship and praise, yeah, I let everybody know right where I stand. On the back of my right, there's a fish and a cross for the world to see. Yeah, I know God is good all of the time, well, there's no doubt for me. But sometimes I hurt, and sometimes I cry. Sometimes I can't get it right No matter how hard I seem to try Sometimes I fall down And stumble over my own disguise Well, I try to look strong As the whole world looks on But sometimes alone I cry Well, sometimes I fall down and stumble over my own disguise. Well, I try to look strong as the whole world looks on, but sometimes alone I cry. I try to look strong as the whole world looks on, but sometimes alone I cry. Mm-hmm. I surveyed all the good things that come to me from above. If I could count all the blessings and the storehouse of love, I'd simply ask for one favor from him beyond mortal land. I'm sure he'd grant it again and again. I want to stroll All the troubles and heartaches 
so truly vanished away, then we'll enjoy all the beauty where all things are new. I want to stroll over heaven with you. So many places of beauty we long to see here below. But time and treasures have kept us from making plans to go. But come that morning of rapture, together we'll pray anew. I want to stroll over heaven with you. I want to stroll over All the troubles and heartaches are truly vanished away. Then we'll enjoy all the beauty where all things are new. I want to stroll over heaven with you. I want to stroll over heaven with you. All right, Chuck, it's grading time tonight, and I've got the world-famous Brother Dale White with us. Brother right. Dale, uh, A, B, C, D, F, or, or any minuses in there, how are you going to rate uh, Brother Chuck tonight? A plus. I told him, I said, I believe you've been practicing. I believe you've been practicing. He has done an awesome job tonight. Well, thank got you. Got good old songs in there and got some new ones in there. He's done A plus tonight. Y'all mean a lot to us here at the studio, and you folks out there watching tonight, it's been an honor to have you. We've still got uh, time for some more singing, but uh, I'll tell you what, uh, we got seven more minutes, and uh, Chuck, you, you think you might work us a couple more in there right quick, File Hush? I think there's a good possibility we might work two in there somewhere. Tell the boss that we're still praying for her, Miss Marlene. and uh, Sure will. We appreciate you, and all you folks out there, uh, this program never starts without a prayer, brother. Dale leads yeah. us in uh, prayer before this, and we're praying for the folks in the community. And, and I want to thank you all for your ministry and stuff. Chuck, I'm going to turn it back to you for the two, and we'll see you all next time. Chuck Clark, Dale right. White with us. <laughs> There's a lighthouse on a hillside And it overlooks life sea When I'm tossed, you know it says down a light A light that I might see But the light that shines in darkness If it wasn't for the lighthouse, my ship would sail no more. Now everybody that lived around us says tear that old lighthouse down. You know the big ships don't sail this way anymore. There's no use of it standing around. But then my mind goes back to that stormy night when just in time, thank God I saw the light. It was the light from that old it stands there on the hill and I thank God for the lighthouse I owe my life to Him yes Jesus is the lighthouse for and from the rocks of sin shown his light around me that I could clearly see but if it 
everybody.